If I could describe gymnastics in one word, word it would be perfection. When you walk into, walk into a gymnastics arena, everything is perfect. The mats are perfectly placed, ju judges are perfectly dressed, and gymnasts are perfectly uttered. When you are a gymnast, you live and breathe the pressure to be perfect for every second, ever since you are, are a little kid. The first time I stepped into a gym was sometime around 2003. My mom introduced me to gymnastics because I used to have too much energy and was running around the house all the time. Gymnastics is who I am today. I, I don't know how it happened, but for me, it was love at first sight. I, I saw the gym as a playground for me. Every time I walked in, I always had so much fun. Today, the person I am is thanks to my gymnastics career. The responsibility, the passion, the hard work, the perfectionism, it's all thanks to my uh, life as a student and as an athlete. It turned me into a very elegant and strong little girl with a thin body and huge muscles, sometimes even stronger than the boys I went to school with. However, behind the scenes, the story isn't as perfect as you could think. Uh, in June 24, 2020, I'm sitting at home with my family, and we decide to watch the new Netflix documentary, Athlete Day, a documentary that exposes the sexual abuse uh, that Dr. Larry Nassar fa uh, faced on many, on many gymnasts for the past maybe 30 years. While watching it, I realized what I have been denying for years. I myself am a survivor of emotional, physical, and psychological abuse. However, my talk today is not about abuse, it's about healing. But I should give you some context about my story for you to understand how it all went through. Within the gymnastics culture, the line between hard work and abuse is usually exceeded. When I retired from elite gymnastics in 2017, I didn't love it anymore. I don't know, I knew something was off. I wasn't happy anymore. I, wa I felt unmotivated, in pain, drained. I didn't understand what was going on. Gymnastics training is very hard, especially when you want to become a high performance athlete. I wanted to become a high performance gymnast. By the time I, wa I was eight years old, I was training around 24 to 30 hours a week. I wanted that, I was ready for the hard work. What I wasn't ready for is for my dream to be turned into a nightmare by people that failed to protect me and my teammates. As I said before, gymnastics made me who I am and I will be forever grateful for that. However, I went through some stuff that no gymnast and no child should go through in such a young age. At some point, the hard work and the pressure becomes mistreatment. For instance, I was body shamed for so many years, so I had early stages of eating disorders. I was overtrained, so I developed a lot of stress injuries all over my body. I was told I wasn't good enough, so now I'm over, I push myself too hard. I was given the silent treatment when I expressed myself, so I learned to ignore my feelings and to keep quiet, because apparently that was better. My injuries were never acknowledged, so now I have chronic pain in my back, my wrist, my knees, and my ankles. For most of you that never grew up in this kind of environment, this might come as a shock, but sadly it's the reality of thousands of gymnasts around the world, and all of these stories have been exposed during the past years in every single country you can imagine. In this culture, coaches, and everyone believes that this treatment makes you stronger and makes you successful. But guess what? It doesn't. By the time I retired when I was 19 years old, after competing in a lot of national championships and international championships and earning my medals individually and with my team, I felt like a broken girl that moved into college gymnastics hoping she could find some comfort there. I did find some peace in college, it's not that stressful, but still, the loveful gymnastics was not there anymore. 
I didn't feel that, that, like that cheerful little girl that walked into the gym all those years ago. Nine months after watching the documentary of Athlete A, and four years after I retired from elite gymnastics, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and depression. The cause, the physical and emotional abuse I, I endured for all those years and all the consequences I've been facing for the past years. Of course, it was a relief to give it a name because I've been struggling with it for a long time and it's confusing not to know what's going on. But when you give it a name, it means you have to deal with it. So at that moment, I started one of the hardest healing journeys I could ever imagine. Gymnastics is a very systematic sport. Uh, you learn every skill and you train it until it's perfect and because you're judged for it. The perfect it is, the better you are. The thing is that life and healing can not be dealt this way. You cannot practice until it's perfect. Life, my life in gymnastics was very difficult, very filled with ups and downs. There's a rule in gymnastics that says that when you fall from an apparatus, you have 30 seconds to get back up before you get a deduction, which is a slight penalty for the mistake you did. In real life, you need much more time than that to heal, to grieve, to understand what's going on before you can move on. So for me, as a former gymnast, getting back, taking my time to get back up was very difficult because I was never allowed to do that. Between 2017 and 2020, I never gave, I always minimized what I had been through. I thought I was dramatizing it. I even felt guilty for thinking that my coaches and the people around me would ever hurt me. When the pandemic started and we were locked down, I had too much time to think about it and I could actually have enough time to process what I have been through and to go back through my experiences and my memories. Of course, it helped me to understand what had happened. The only problem was I was not allowing myself to feel. And that, that turns you into a ticking bomb that's gonna explode at any moment. Eventually, when the pandemic was like almost over, I found a full-time job as a business trainee at a local company. Being a trainee is supposed to be fun. It's an experience when you get trained, you learn, you work in big projects with the biggest people of a company, so there is not a lot of pressure in it. For me, it wasn't that enjoyable. I was scared all the time. And by scared, I mean I didn't want to ask questions. I didn't want to make the slightest mistake. And even got to the point when I was crying and shaking in the bathroom every day of how scared I was of living. When I noticed this, I was at the darkest moment of my life and I realized I needed to look out for help because I couldn't live like this. I went to therapy finally when I was 23 years old. And working on yourself is not that easy. It's very challenging because you dig into very, very hard things that happen throughout your life and the, you haven't even realized yet. But when you go to therapy, you heal. You heal the you you are today. You heal your inner child. You heal your relationships. You heal your mind and you heal your body. In theory, healing happens in stages. You go from denial and grief, and in the end, you have depression and acceptance. But the truth is that healing doesn't work like that for everyone. You can have as many stages as you need to have. For me, one of the most important part, parts of my journey has been allowing my, myself to feel. For 17 years, I was told that everything that was happening around me was more important than my own feelings. So giving myself the chance to sit down and accept that I was tired, that I was sad, and I, that I was angry was a huge step for me. Writing was a, an amazing tool. I could finally be honest with myself. And to, and to keep it to me, I didn't have to share with anyone. 
I want it for me. Of course, I spent months and months of therapy crying all the time with my therapist, telling her my stories, telling her how sad I am for the little me that wasn't able to have as much fun as she would, she would have to. But I, I found a lot of comfort, peace, and relief in hurting, because it's okay to hurt sometimes. And if you don't hurt and you keep it inside, it's going to haunt you for years and years. After that, the next huge step for me was talking to my parents. That was a particularly difficult conversation because as I said, my mom was the one who took me into gymnastics. When I told them when, what I was, I've been going on, they felt guilty, of course, because they took me there. But they weren't. I knew they weren't guilty. They introduced me to gymnastics for me to grow and to have fun. And you learn a lot of things about life in these kind of activities. So they are not to blame. And I'm still trying them to, to under, making them to understand that it's not their fault. And I'm really grateful that I went through that experience because all, a lot of good came out of it also. So forgiving someone that did relatively no bad has been easy. But forgiving myself has been the hardest part of it. Today, I still think that as an eight-year-old girl, I will have made better decisions. But what could, have, what could have I done? Um, I could have retired earlier, maybe. I, ha I could have spoken up, but I was a child. I didn't know what, I was going on, what was going on around me. The people, my coaches, they would have, they should have known better. They should have known the better decisions, and they should have protected me, not me. I did the best I could to protect myself as a kid that was growing up in an abusive environment. Growing up in this kind of environment broke me. I lost myself in there. When I retired, I didn't know who I was outside of gymnastics or outside the abuse. I was ready to live in this full survival mode all the, all the time. But it turns out it's not necessary when you are in a healthy environment. Right now, years after I retired and years after all these experiences, I'm getting to know the me that lives in thrive mode. I am a 23-year-old woman that is starting to put boundaries, that is starting to say no, that doesn't feel guilty when, she, when she's resting and when she's tired. I am uh, finding a happier life outside that environment, and I am understanding that that shouldn't define me. I could tell you that healing is a, there's a process for it or a, a recipe, but there is not. One day you feel like everything is so much better, and the next one you're struggling to shower or to get out of the bed again. In healing, sometimes you feel like you're taking one step forward and three steps back, but that is not true. The fact that you understand your feelings, the fact that you know that something had triggered a memory or, ex or an experience, that it's important and it's an achievement. And maybe someday you can be standing here telling your story and be proud about yourself because you overcame it. What I want to tell you with all of this is that the trauma we go through is not our fault, but it is our responsibility to heal and to give ourselves a better chance. Thank you. <laughs>